Welcome to the Art of the Intuitive Mind. I'm your host, Romy. I hope that you find something in this session that enables you to connect to your own truth. So I'm here with the fantastic Whitney Freya today, which I'm very excited about. Um, I'm going to let Whitney tell you a little bit about herself. But but yes, I am uh, one of her creatively fit coaches and doing the coaching training with Whitney was absolutely fantastic. So I just want to start by saying I highly recommend that to everybody. So Whitney, <laughs> tell us Thank about you. yourself and what you do in the world. Oh, hello, darling. Well, um, what I do in the world, what I love about the subject of your talk here and just even that question is, you know, what I do in the world um, changes and evolves, right? Which I love. And um, my title, quote unquote, you know, which kind of cracks me up in a way, but that has changed over the years. But um, since 1996, Basically, I have been guiding others into a sacred and personal painting practice, um, which is all about aligning with the truth that life is meant to be lived as art and you are the artist. How marvelous <laughs> and there, and is that? Yes, everything expands out from that truth. And the conversation has changed over the years. When I opened my art center in 96, um, I was 26 years old. I had never painted on a canvas, literally when I opened the doors. Um, I'd had an art teacher when I was nine tell me drawing wasn't my thing. So I just figured I didn't inherit that creative DNA. Um, and after selling books door to door for four summers, which is important just because nothing's as scary as doing that. I was reading a book called Zen and the Art of Making a Living. And in it, he said, unless you adopt an artist mentality, you won't be able to create the life of your dreams. And I was sold on creating the life of my dreams. And I had been such a wannabe artist and it felt so difficult to get into an art class that the aha was to open an art center that was more like the YMCA, you know, the like a gym for your right brain. So I was talking about right brain, left brain and getting creatively fit. That's where that came from. Um, but over the years, as I think we're going to talk about, I think when you start on a creative path that isn't just about like learning how to paint, you know, a barn with the perfect sunlight, you know, kind of thing, um, that there is a spiritual, personal growth journey that comes alongside the creative journey. Mm -hmm. And so, as you know, now, you know, I talk more about like being in a co-creative relationship with your infinite self and life is the canvas of your soul. And, and uh, my, my latest title is an inspired living expert because inspired means spirit within. And, you know, it's all about living, following the energy of what gets you fired up and inspires you. And inevitably following that path is going to take some creativity because it's not the path that's going to be laid out for you by, you know, the systems and structures and society and things like that, which is fine. Right. But, um, that is the key is nurturing that creative energy, that creative awareness, that creative spirit, so that you can kind of have the courage, you know, to follow your heart and do things differently, yeah. get creative yeah. in life. So yeah, I think it's really interesting, <laughs> thing, like the, the evolution, because it's like, if you, if you listen to your intuition, you'll follow what lights you up, then it's, oh, of course it's going to change. Cause you, you can't like, there's not going to be the pathway that you imagine that's it. And then this is what happens. It's like, it's going to evolve and change all the time, which is a marvelous thing as well, isn't it? It's like, it exactly. Really boring if you're like, yeah, oh, no, I mean, I still now. get, yeah, I still get just as fired up as I ever have and see unlimited possibilities and ways to share this and how to provide an experience for people um, to to really integrate kind of the new teaching, the new, yeah. you know, yeah. atmosphere, the new landscape that is clearly here. You know, we're not living in the same world that our mothers were. No. Right. So um, so we can experience these changes and kind of these new programs. You know, if you think of a computer, right, think of like the first computer you had, <laughs> versus the one you have now we constantly are upgrading our operating systems. And so we're constantly being called to up upgrade our internal operating systems. And we can read about it and talk about it, but when you actually like make it and try to, um, you know, represent it symbolically and with color, 
that's when it sinks in and really becomes a part of who you are. Yeah. So that is unlimited, which yeah. is super exciting. I think the, um, the, like the, the infinite potential aspect, like, well, doing the creatively fit coaching massively helped me to connect to that. Um, but it's such a, it's such an exciting place to be. And it feels so connected, connected to your intuition as well, because I feel like unless you, unless you can, unless you can start listening to and following your intuition, I mean, you, that, that, that is the place that opens up the possibilities because it, it, because you don't get stuck in the, what you see is the right way to do things. You, you, you follow the openness of your intuition, which is fabulous. Exactly. Well, you know, being told something like you should follow your intuition more in life for a lot of people, you know, we weren't taught what intuition no. is or was, and it can be a very abstract concept. And so to attempt to weave your intuitive self into your life as you know it right now can be a little confusing, but going to the canvas, I mean, like, okay, just play with color, just smear it around, even with your fingers and you will understand your intuition will start to guide you like which color, like notice, develop a witness between your thinking mind. That's like, which color should I choose? And then the part of you that's just like raw orange. Yeah. It right? feels like there's like a waking up there and it's like that you, you, you're doing something with, but not doing something, you know what I mean? It's like that, that it just, the more, and that's why it's a practice. I think that the more that you practice, the more you, that just is there and you're able to listen and notice it. I think. Yeah. Well, and most of what gets people nervous or scared about painting, you know, I mean, uh, I can just assume that most people listening to this, I mean, it just in general, in my life experience, if I like handed them a canvas through the computer screen and said, hey, here's a blank canvas and some paints, you know, make your mark. They, whoa, no, wait a second. <laughs> you know, like that would be, there would be resistance there. Yeah. Um, and what I love about the process that you and I both enjoy so much and share with others is that the beginning is literally doodling, scribbling. This is not about being good at painting as a technique or a fine art skill. This is to awaken yeah. these kind of neural pathways in your brain that didn't get nurtured or activated um, in school. They didn't get nurtured or activated around the kitchen table. They're not what's being pumped through the media uh, you know, channels. And so this is a different kind of a new way of looking at things. And the way we're offering painting has nothing to do with drawing well or, you know, understanding shading or things like that. The first task is literally just to play, to paint like you were three years old. And so that is really fun to be able to share with people, right? Because most yeah. people are like, I wouldn't even know where to start. It's like, great. Like, yeah, it's just, it's you don't want to know. <laughs> exciting process. It's such a delight to, to, to do it. And it's, it's, yeah, I think the, um, just the, like, I don't know, like I can remember when I first started doing the creative fit coaching, the, the, the feeling of like resistance that would come up and then, but if you, if you are able to stay with it and to move through it, it's like that, then you kind of like, well, A, you often you realize that the resistance actually was out about something completely different, or it's about a story, or it brings up, and I don't know, it's just it was just fabulous. And the the way that how you work on the canvas is then you just spot things in other places in your life of it, and it's it's incredible how it is a mirror. But I guess it makes sense because of the fact that it is all coming from your creative brain that you most of the time we don't access. So it's like the more that you can access it, of course you're gonna heal other things that are going on for you in your life so yeah for me that's definitely been my experience it's been exactly I mean there is this mystical magical which you know I love you know uh, aspect to this and there's also very real um research and things in neuroscience that shows how you know the brain is task specific um for example getting to the aha moment you know, um, they find that you will have an easier time having that breakthrough that you're desiring if you can get yourself in your right brain, which is what we do when we do the painting in this manner. Um, and also your intuitive voice will come up. You've all experienced it. And often what happens is 
you get the intuition, but then you turn to that logical, rational voice that you're super familiar with. You're not even aware you're doing this. Yeah. And you're like, should I listen to this? Like, it just told me, I just had this crazy idea. <laughs> and again, your logical mind is physiologically programmed to uh, register all of your experiences up until now, and then use that to project into the future. Mm -hmm. So if there's something new, your intuition is responsible for new things, right? So your intuition is going to give you insight into a very next step that will lead to a new life experience. We're constantly being guided into new life experiences. While our rational thinking, logical left brain is physiologically programmed to resist all change. So it goes through your file cabinet of experiences up until now. And based on those experiences, if they don't match with this intuitive idea that you were just given, it is going to tell you no. It is going to uh, translate as resistance. It's going to manifest as procrastination. It is going to manifest as like, oh my gosh, I've got to clean out under my bed. Like I've been meaning to do that forever. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's understanding and developing a relationship and being able to witness like, oh, that's my logical fear-based mind trying to protect me from change. Mm -hmm. Do I really have anything to fear making my mark on this canvas or, you know, taking this workshop or, you know, starting to write a book or posting something online, you know, like, hmm, let's get curious and go underneath the fear because it's the fear that is going to block your intuitive wisdom. It is, and it can so. be so powerful as well. It's so interesting how the fear that you, it can so stop you. And yet when you examine it, it's like, like, well, you know, what is the worst thing that's going to happen? It's, but it's so, but still you can be so, so caught in that. But Absolutely. Absolutely. And we've been led to believe that fear you know, our knee jerk reaction to any fear or resistance is danger. I shouldn't do this. You know, I could lose control, right? I could lose control of my time or my finances or, or people might not accept me. Yeah. And, um, and actually the fear is, is I believe saying, no, 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 no. I'm just getting your attention, bringing your present, bringing you present. Yeah. So that you can examine the fear as an ally, as a guide. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what else do I need here? What do I need to explore? What do I want to look at? The fear wants you to go underneath mm -hmm. that initial um, energy, which we know fear and excitement are the same vibration, yeah. right? So yeah. fear has been very much misunderstood. And I was on a call last night for a retreat I'm doing with a friend here soon. And she invited someone who brought up fear to develop a sacred relationship with fear. Mm -hmm. And I love that, you know, that's very much um, what I'm inviting people into that fear is not meant to stop you. It's not the big, hairy, you know, fanged monster. <laughs> it's actually your guide and fear is going to stand at the threshold of your greatest change. And until you overcome fear, until you learn how to love the fear and see it as an ally, you're going to be living in fear. You're going to be living at the mercy of this perceived boogeyman. Um, when in fact, the fear is like, you know, your grandmother standing at the doorway, like, okay, do you have everything you need? Right? Like, do you have your galoshes? Do you have your umbrella? Do you have your lunch? Do you have your bus money? You know, yeah. it's, fear is not there to stop you. No. So it's fun. It's fun to recreate that relationship. Yeah. And you've, you've talked about fear, like seeing it as a, it's just a, like a signal that, oh, you're going to, this is something new and this is something different. And it's like, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it. It's just, and actually you can, yeah, that, that's saying it's the same energy as excitement. You can, you can reinterpret it and, and explore it instead of taking it as a, that's, that's a no then, which, and it's so interesting as well, that the more that you practice doing the things that are scary, the more that they're, I guess it's not that you don't feel the fear, it's just that your relationship with it changes, isn't it? And, it, and it's like, oh, okay, I feel like this, but I'm going to do it anyway. And it's, it's good. <laughs> exactly. I've said many times that I feel like personally, a better description than saying I've gotten better at painting is to say I've become less afraid yeah. of painting. I've been, I've become less afraid in the process. I'm like, let's try this and see what happens, you know? Um, and that's what I've witnessed people, you know, in my online programs or in the coaching training that come in with zero art background and all of a sudden are painting these things. And they're just like, 
okay, my friends are kind of freaking out here because I've never painted. And then I'm, they're painting these amazing paintings and it's because they've gotten out of their own way, Mm. you know, and they've, and they just showed up and they learned how to become present, which getting in your right hemisphere, that is physiologically programmed for the present moment. The left logical mind is past future oriented. So when you paint in this manner, that's super easy, um, you do become present. And in that present moment, you can access anything. So a lot of people access this like masterful painter, you know, talents, not everybody does, you know, but but it's just a signal or a symbol of what is available to you, the level of mastery that's available to you in any area of your life when you just show up, you know, coming from your heart with a sincere intention to expand, yeah. you know, to leave, you know, to develop this new relationship with fear. Yeah. Um, and we want change in this planet, on this in this world, on all levels. Mm-hmm. So it's really important for us not right now to get curious about where we are resisting change. Because we live in a holographic universe, the part contains the whole. So if you're afraid of change, how are we going to expect our governments and our, you know, how we treat the environment and all of that to change? If you have children or grandchildren, like we kind of need things to change. So it starts within each of us and developing a new relationship to fear and our creative spirit is like, as far as Romilly and I are concerned, top of the list. Yeah. Yeah. You you made me think about the, um, that you talked before about like that we're all multidimensional beings and that you like stepping into the to the version of you that is already doing the thing that you want to be doing and that for me it was so powerful because it's like like just the the we create the blocks ourselves that we're the we're the only ones that you you can be any person that you want to be in any moment and actually if you can envision yourself doing the thing then you can be doing you can be that person who's doing the thing in the present moment because it's all it's all one it's all the same and yeah that was a super powerful powerful thing for me well that's such a perfect story as far as intuition and as an example um a real life example of how scary it can be because uh you know there were a series of events that led to the program that Romley's referring to is called super soul flow and um there was things, intuitive happenings, synchronicities and coincidences that led up to an experience um, with a, a a clairvoyant reader that actually pretty much gave me the process, which was mind blowing because normally those are much more abstract, which is what I've been experiencing for about a year or two. And anyway, I was guided intuitively you know, even through the reading, because this is, you know, they're channeling your guide or can't really logically explain that. But I was heavily encouraged um, to develop an experience of teaching a program that would remind people, remind you that you are a multidimensional being. Mm -hmm. And I was like, seriously, people are really going to think I'm crazy now. (laughs) Like if I put this out there, right. And, um, and, but I, I knew at that point I'd had enough experience, you know, following my intuition and I've always trusted almost more getting out of my own way, which is a gift. And, you know, when I opened my art center with no art background, of course, that was the first step. Um, but within months of launching super soul flow, the cover of like psychology today, or, or literally like time magazine, something like that was the brain has been found to be multidimensional. And quantum physics confirms this, right? So a fun way of looking at this is um, the process that Romley is referring to is illuminating the fact that just like you can remember your past self. So everyone can think back, like think back to your 2020 self. Think back to your like January 2020 self. (laughs) Think back to your 30-year-old self, your 20-year-old self, your high school self, right? Like a song comes on right? And you're immediately transported back to that aspect of you. And you can sit there and imagine and say things like, oh my gosh, if I knew then what I knew now, right? It's very real. So quantum physics has explained this, that, you know, linear time is just on planet earth here. And you can literally remember your future self, just like you can remember your past self because your past self isn't still here, right? In a physical way, but we're very comfortable remembering our past. Likewise, you can remember your future. 
And you can also, of the infinite possibilities, like right now I could stand up and walk. I could talk about a bajillion different things. You know, Romilly and I could pull out our sketchbooks and draw a million things. Like we're constantly surrounded with infinite choices. So we can choose to remember into a desired future. And, And you tell yourself, like, just like I'm remembering my 20 year old self. Okay. I'm remembering my 60 year old self. What is she doing? What do I want to experience when I'm 60? Right. And I can vision into that. I can remember into my future and then get my own advice, which this is, you know, when they say things like you have all the wisdom you need within you. And I used to be like, no, oh, <laughs> um, But my infinite self, the part of me that can access all the potential futures, yes, that's how I have access. Um, So you can get your own advice. So everything that I'm sharing is to guide you within to that knowing that wisdom, that space within where everything is possible. It's not about anything other than accessing your own inner guidance. And that's what we access at the canvas and through these different ways of looking at things you know, and and you can ask your future self, like, show me a symbol that encapsulates, that will symbolize this chosen future of mine. And now I'm going to paint it to create this bridge, right? And as you paint the symbol that you've received in the meditation, you're integrating that aspect of you. It's like, I choose that. Yeah. And, um, it's like magic. <laughs> well, it it's is magic. way more productive than worrying. Oh my God, am I going to have enough money when I'm 60? Like, what if, you know, I get hurt and I'm, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, so you get to choose, but yeah. this is a really important factor right now. Yeah. And I think it's really interesting that it's like that you, that's why doing like all of the practice that helps you to connect to your intuition and listen, listen inwards. That's why it's so important because if you because that's the, that's the way that you get to being to access it because if you're still stuck in your logical brain and and what's what's possible because you think that the only thing is possible is what you can see in your current reality then you'll never be able to get to that because you won't be able to visualize it or envision it or imagine it even because you but as soon as you can imagine it and you can actually feel it it's that thing isn't it that that you know um Oh, I can't think of his name. Can't, can't remember his name. Crazy, you know, quantum quantum meditation man, <laughs> Joe Dispenza. <laughs> oh, Joe Dispenza. Yes, Joe is like the left brain version of me, yeah. as far as yeah, I'm yeah. concerned. Like I'm like, go, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he talks about like the the key is being able to visualize the fruit, the future you. But it's like you. I can remember when I first started reading his stuff. I was like, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't connect to it. I couldn't. It, I just, just didn't. My brain was like, no. <laughs> and it's like but at the more that the more creative practices, the more I try I practice listening to my intuition and the more the more I'm able to access that. And then it's just such a magical moment when you're like, oh wow, I can actually visualize the future that I want. And I actually want that. It's not constructed around something someone else wants or what I should want. <laughs> it's like it's so exactly. Amazing. Exactly. And this really isn't anything new, right? It this is we used to talk about goal setting, at least I used to talk about goals, you know, setting goals and research, you know, if you write down your goals, you have a greater chance of fulfilling them. And then there was, um, visualization, Mm. you know, athletes use professional athletes have used visualization practices forever. They imagine into their future self in the competition, in the championship, whatever it is. And they're picturing themselves going through the motions. Um, there's the story of the, um, golfer. I'm not going to remember the names, but he was like hit by a semi truck in a full body cast for like a year and months after getting out of the hospital, he like won some like the U (laughs) S open or some major golf tournament. And apparently he like collapsed when he got off the 18th hole the last day. And they're just like, how in the world? He said every day lying in that hospital bed, I visualized this course I played these 18 holes over and over and over every single day. Um, And there are multiple, you know, know, there are many stories like that. So this isn't really anything new. It's just packaged differently. And frankly, I think more in alignment with the current science um, that has discovered that there are multi-dimensions. We know time is different um, in outer space. and, um, And we understand that what you focus on expands, where you send your energy, 
Yeah. You know, where your attention goes, energy flows, um, like attracts like. We understand how energy works and that we are energy. And so we can harness that um, in a really creative, fun way, you know. <laughs> Why not? Exactly. Make it joyful. Oh, speaking of joyful, I haven't <laughs> let's do this. I forgot about the joyful object. So this is what I brought along today. So I made this little silly little wreath. It's got some bells on it. <laughs> oh, I want you to put it on your head like a crown. That's what I thought it was. There you go. That's perfect. Maybe I could clip it on. Yeah. But yeah, I love it. it just hangs on my wall and it and I it always makes me smile. So I thought I'd share that one today. <laughs> I love it. Okay, well, my joyful object um is this singing bowl oh which honestly I don't even understand what it's made out of I think it is made out of metal oh. um and I think if I don't talk oh yeah can't hear it no why is zoom doing that it's silent silent bowl okay hold on you can change okay okay now no, you no. Can. can you hear it now What I love about singing bowls, and I have like, I'm surrounded by them, um, is that this does, even without my conscious mind, it's speaking to, speaking to the fact, okay, thank you, um, speaking to the fact that everything is vibration mm -hmm. and frequency. And when we remember that and develop a, an affinity of sensitivity to the vibration, the frequency that we're around our environment, our relationships, the food that we eat, the words that we speak, that we think, the singing bowls help to attune us to that, you know, to become sensitive to the vibration. Um, and they, they have kind of a organizing effect, you know, like if you're feeling stressed or frazzled or whatever, and you can sit down with your singing bowl and just, you know um, I love these and you know I love using them in courses and workshops and things like that but uh the singing bowls have changed my life for sure among other things but they're a fabulous tool that bring me great joy <laughs> yes I don't, have, I don't have any singing bowls but I, I it's on my list that I want to get one I've seen the incredible Your future self has them for sure what's that that your yes. future self has them for sure. Definitely. Yes, absolutely. But yeah, they're beautiful. I have got um some chimes that are there. I've forgotten what they're made of. They're made of bamboo. They're, they're the most divine sound. The ones that I've got are, I think they're air. They're, they do them for the different elements. And like, just whenever I'm having a like, oh, I'm feeling a bit frantic. It's like, just, just take the sound. And it's incredible how sound can be so powerful. It's beautiful. Absolutely. I was just reading in um, the Gene Keys book, which, you know, is one of my new passions. And um, and it was talking about how um, so much of of like our uh, feeling, our perspective in the moment is auditory. It is mm -hmm. vibrational. So we all know like the tone of voice yeah. that people use, you know, and I remember ex trying to explain this to you someone that your tone of voice mm -hmm. is not you know conducive to us getting along here and that was not understood right but so much like we can say you know yeah sure I'm gonna go to Bali or <laughs> yeah sure I'm going to Bali <laughs> right those are very different meanings and frequencies so this is you know, something to tune into and, um, and get to know and understand, you know, I'm always encouraging, uh, everyone who I can possibly reach to get really curious about their words, to become a curator mm -hmm. of your thoughts and your words. And, um, and I'm actively doing that all the time, you know, because I'm a single woman entrepreneur, wearing all the hats, you know, and, um, there's plenty of opportunity to worry or to stress. Yeah. And so I'm constantly monitoring what I'm thinking. Um, in fact, the other day I wrote down on a piece of paper, liberation, excitement, and connection. 
to remind myself of what people are going to experience when they join me, like in the coaching training. For sure. they are. They, everybody should join. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, you know, so it's managing. It's like, ooh, uh, you know, I've been traveling a lot this winter and all of a sudden the next coaching training is coming up and I'm feeling like oh, is it all going to happen in time. And so it was like, Mm. liberation excitement connection that became my mantra and way helpful it's very it's just very powerful isn't it when you shift your attention to where you want it to be it's like and it's so we're just not taught that at all and it's so well maybe maybe now maybe the next generation maybe they'll have a greater awareness of it but yeah wow. it's such a such a powerful way to live exactly and your intuition can't communicate to you if you're at a low vibration or frequency you know if you're in fear like white knuckled clenching on to like this has got to happen your intuition like yeah it's like, just gets squashed down and it, yeah yeah it it can't there's not an open channel for that to flow um so just bringing yourself present just connecting to your breath yeah. you know imagining with each exhale that you're releasing anything that's low vibration that feels heavy you know, that, that causes worry. Just imagine it leaving you through your exhale or imagine you're a tree in the fall and the leaves just gently falling away, like whatever it takes, but bring yourself back into the very present moment. And from that place, just get curious about the thoughts that cross your mind. Mm -hmm. um, another fun intuition tip, I'm currently reading um, Rise Above. I'm creating an audiobook. Which by the time this is out, I should have an well, I should have an app. I haven't told anyone, but so now you're getting so shh, Rama, because I'm not telling anyone. anyone yet. But when you all are hearing me, I have an app. It's called Dreams Made Visible, and it's all audio. It's all guided meditation. But so I've been reading Rise Above again, which is super interesting. You don't always sit down and read your own book, right? No. Um, but intuition, um, part of what nurtures it now i'm like trying to remember even what i was going to say um it's well when because you were like oh no i didn't mean to right now i'm like no oh, i'm giving it away um but intuition is dependent on being present mm -hmm. and one of the exercises that i offer in the book is just the next time a friend might be someone you haven't talked to in years but the next time someone randomly crosses your mind reach out to them, like shoot them a text or message or whatever. And just be like, you know what? You just crossed my mind. I wanted to check in. How are you? And you will be surprised. Yes. Yes. They crossed your mind for a reason. And anything that just happens to cross your mind. Yeah. You it's, know, and it's, that, it's the developing the listening to that, isn't it? Because I think that especially if you're, if you know that you're someone who has, has got, been a long time caught in the logical brain or has, valued what you can see improve over what what your feeling your gut feeling is yeah it's like that you you you, you miss it or you dismiss it either either or and it's like yeah I was actually talking to my mum about that the other evening about how the number of times like that, that there is something you know there's something else because the number of times things like that happen where somebody pops into your head and then they phone or or, or the other way around or and it's like it's exactly. crazy so exactly. I mean, I know I used to dismiss my intuitive voice as like random thoughts, mm -hmm. you know, crazy ideas, random thoughts. I don't consider them random anymore. Uh, it's super fascinating uh, to, to develop, you know, kind of tune yourself, you know, just like tuning a radio dial. I mean, mm -hmm. we used to do that, right? Where you're, you're <laughs> clear, you know, you just start tuning to that intuition and you can practice just like opening the fridge and be like, okay, what do I feel like eating? What's speaking to me, you know, or getting dressed, what color, you know, what is attracting me? Um, I have a practice of if my eye lands on a particular book, I'm surrounded by books. Romelie knows I'm always recommending books. Um, I, I love when it. one catches my eye, I'll pull it out and just open to a page and it'll be like mind blowing. So that's another fun way to just play with your intuition. There are a lot of different little tips and tricks. It's very interesting because the more that you, I feel like for me personally, the more that I listen and and act on as well, because I think that sometimes you can listen and then be like, oh, I think that was an intuitive hit and I kind of ignored it. But when I actually take action on things, it's like you get so much affirmation 
or is that the, is that the word I mean? But, you know, you, you the confirmation back that it was the right thing. And then the next time it makes it that much easier to, to listen and follow it. And it's, yeah. So, so I'm going to ask you one of the questions there on my list as we're chattering. Oh, okay. right. We'll get to the, the list. Go to the list. <laughs> Go to the left road list. Uh, when you, what do you, just, do you think, you know, like people talk about having a gut feeling or do you, do you feel, if you have a strong intuitive hit, do you feel that in your body or how does you experience it? Which is very difficult to describe, but. Um, yeah. Um, so it does feel resonant. So um, I don't, always like feel it as a physical sensation in my body but it it feels familiar you know it's like I get it I actually I just got a hit this morning um and it resulted in me writing down um writing like the parenting guide for raising unstoppable kids oh yay (laughs) I'm like oh really like another (laughs) but um but I have a tremendous passion for mothers and children and raising and parenting. And um, I fully believe that any kids, any young kids these days, they're little walking masters and um, they're, they would love a very different environment to be raised in one that recognize that they are born with their own inherent genius. And our, our call as parents is to, create this container and space within which they can grow into their natural genius, where they can remember into why they're here, what lights them up and turns them on. And um, I was aware of this when I was raising my three and they're 23, 21 and 19 now. And um, I'm just so excited and impressed to watch them. And they're very different and, you know, they have their struggles and things, but uh, they are, definitely a different breed because of these different ways that I looked at them. I never really felt, I used to feel guilty. I never really felt like a mother. I kind of <laughs> felt, I felt more like a guide. Like I was so in awe of these children and, you know, the three playing together and it, they were just hysterical. Um, so I felt like a guide and I felt like it was, it was my responsibility to pay attention. I remember around when they were eight, um, really noticing what lit them up because I had read once that you're your most authentic self at age eight. And when I was eight, I had art centers in my basement, like literally painted, stenciled art center. Um, And we had basements where I grew up. And so that place under the stairs and the two houses I grew up in were art centers, stenciled art center shelves with art supplies the kids from the neighborhood would come over and we do art projects that's so crazy (laughs) and then when I was nine the art teacher told me drawing wasn't my thing and you know my crafty self kind of kept going but it was like this not artistic I can't be an artist um thing and so um so anyway you know they're all just all these little things and I want to share and this morning I'm like oh I can't do another Facebook group or another program like I (laughs) I'm like I'll just write a book and that way I can get it out there so we'll see you know but um but that feels you know when it feels like oh that checks all the boxes and it feels light and expansive like it feels interesting so what I do then when you get that intuitive hit is what's the very next thing I can do that's in alignment. Mm. So I did email uh, Jane Ashley from Flower of Life Press, who's pu- published my last two books. And I'm like, so just had an idea for a companion book to 30 Days to Unstoppable. Um, so I shared it with someone and I wrote in my journal uh, the uh, the spheres of wellness and it's going to fit so perfectly. Right. I'm just like, it's it's like, it feels like it's going to start writing itself. Like it's going to be fun. Like maybe it'll be written by the time I get back from Bali, just because they're really freaking long air flights. Yeah. (laughs) Keep you busy. I think that that, I, I can totally get that feeling of, it's like, for me, it's like the kind of like, there's a lightness to it of feeling like, oh yeah, this is this, you can tell it's not coming from fear. And if there is fear, there might be fear. Usually I'd, for me, I think that the fear comes, jumps in a little bit later and then it's like, oh, but actually if I can, if I can lean back into that initial feeling of, 
of yeah the lightness and that kind of like excitement with not necessarily manically exciting but again that might come a bit later for me sometimes I'm like whoops I've run away in a craziness and I need to to ground myself a bit but but yeah it's it's I find I have found the experience of being able to tune into my intuition because I definitely was at a place where I couldn't and I found and I totally rejected it but the mm-hmm. more that I can I it's it feels wonderful because it feels like a real like knowing knowingness and trust in things that you you previously I would have said well, that's not going to work that's not possible you can't do that who are you to do that and it's like actually to just be open to whatever feels right is very liberating and so yeah that's why I think everybody hope I hope that everyone who watches this decides oh. to, to, to work well and them. I'm just I'm realizing too because I feel like I feel like this will connect with people I'm thinking of like the other ideas I've been given intuitively like that normally the next thought is like really I don't have time to write a book like when am I gonna write a book when the 22 day Tara painting meditation challenge was given to me I was just gonna add one lesson to my Buddha painting <laughs> That's all I was going to do. And then, you know, kind of special edition Buddha expanded. And this was August and August is when I'm paragliding and I don't want to be in the studio. I don't want to be like creating a whole program and editing videos. Yeah. And then I heard paint the feminine Buddha. I'm like, Oh, okay. I can paint Tara, which this is a yellow Tara that I painted years ago. That is like my um, painting. And, and then I heard, I have 21 aspects. <laughs> You're like, oh, no. uh, shoot. <laughs> and I was talking to Don. I'm like, dang it. It's a whole new program. <sighs> but that launched September, 2020. And holy clamoly, Tara was like right on. I mean, hundreds of people have taken that. You probably, that's probably how you found me. I don't know. Like so many people, um, spoke that really spoke to them and the program was powerful. And, literally not in the cards. I, I even, I, I filmed it in my new studio, which at the time in August, not only was it like, okay, film 22 lessons. Um, the studio was just unpainted OSB. Like I, it was just getting slightly yeah. completed. So I caulked everything, painted everything, all the things then started filming the videos, um, which I only had like nine done when I launched the program Mm -hmm. so like all these things you all like like your greatest gifts that you're going to receive in your life will not be at the end of a logical train of thought they will not probably be convenient or fit into your schedule Mm -hmm. um and they're going to trigger some sense of like god can I do this (laughs) I mean, I was painting Tara and I mean, I've painted faces and hands before, but not really my Zen place. Right. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking, okay, Tara. And I laughed at everyone. I was like, oh, I can't paint hands. I'm like, join the club. My hand doesn't look like, you know, a normal hand. So even as I was creating the course, I, there was the aspect of me that was doubting my ability to do that. And I'm like, well, Tara says so. So just you get out of the way and I'm just going to stay present one brush stroke at a time. Like that's all. Yeah. It's, it's really powerful being able to like, it's trusting your intuition in the first place and then, and trusting that whatever happens and wherever it takes you, that's it's, I mean, so it's going to bring you a different experience. So whatever, whatever it is, it's going to be, oh, there's another experience there. So it's not, it's getting out of the, there's a right way and a wrong way, isn't it? Isn't it? Which, Yeah. Well, and then as Tara would say, and may all sentient beings benefit from me getting out of my own way, from me overcoming fear or understanding that the fear is actually there to guide me, following my intuition. I mean, that's my intuition. And this is kind of a profound moment, actually. (laughs) Thank you, Ramon, for creating this space. But literally, I think I could say like everything maybe minus my children, which of course they all come about when they please, but um, everything in my life that I'm like, oh, thank goodness, like and grateful for, all came through an intuitive Mm. intuitive guidance. Everything. None of it made sense. (laughs) (laughs) Opening an art center, starting a paraglide at age 46, you know, um, a lot of the things that I, moving here, 
leaving my marriage, which frankly, I'm still ecstatic about, um, <laughs> uh, you know, like none of that made sense. It was all scary. But as soon as I like crossed the threshold and, and said, I'm doing it no matter what, it's like this feeling of being surrounded, supported, guided, following the clues. Like you feel very much like you're in a co-creative relationship, which is what my latest book, 30 Days to Unstoppable is all about. It's like people, like you have amazing ideas. They've actually been given to you and you don't have to know all the answers. You don't have to understand exactly how it's going to proceed. Mm -hmm. You just need to put one foot in front of the other, just like planting a garden. Mm -hmm. You know, you get the seeds, the seed has the blueprint. Yeah. It doesn't need you to tell you, uh, it doesn't need you to tell it how to grow, but it does need you to take it out of the envelope put it in some dirt that doesn't have a bunch of other stuff growing in it, make sure it gets water yeah. That's wrong. Um, and light, right? We're not thinking like, oh crap, it's day 15. I need to tell that tomato seed to, <laughs> you know, that's not how it works, right? So your dreams are just like that too, or your visions, or your ideas. You know, this book, this parenting book, it's a seed mm. and, and it needs to keep letting me know if it wants to come through me. Yeah. I but think if it that, tells me if it's giving me those signs, then it's like, yeah, okay. I think that there's an interesting thing there as well about like, I think that like, I mean, there's definitely the element of something can come to you and you can be like, yes, this is a thing. And then you don't act on it and it, and it goes away that like that can happen, but then that's okay. Because if it's the, it's gone away, then it's like, oh, well stuff shifted for you. And it it, will find and, someone else. Exactly. Exactly. But I do think as well that, um, allowing things to like you can get stuck in fear and that's different but that like I I know that for me for example at the moment like I've like said yes to so many things <laughs> which is fantastic and all and they're things that I'm still excited about doing but they're but yeah like I'm I'm just about to go to Australia for a month as well so I'm like I I don't have that much space for things at the moment but I I've got all these yeses that I've said I'm, I'm going for but I'm not going down the well I should be doing this and I should be doing that and I shouldn't have signed up to that and I shouldn't have said yes to this because they're all things that feel fantastic and I know they'll still be there and I trust that I'll get to them at the time which is the right time for me to get to them and that's when I'll have the energy and the flow because that it feels so magical being in that flow and the only you can't be in that flow when you start shooting yourself about what you should be doing when and it's easy to to slip back into that but if you can remember the flow it's like yeah, it's a very different way of experiencing life. <laughs> That's what I find when I'm in that. It's like, wow, this is marvelous. <laughs> How come I didn't right. know this 10 years ago? <laughs> right. And I love that you use the word trust because mm. that that is a inseparable dance partner, I think, with intuition, you know, to keep taking the steps. And like you said, they still feel resonant and trusting that the time will appear. I call them time pockets. Mm -hmm. So um, often, often I'm like, okay, I'm not sure how this is all going to get done, but um, time pockets will open up. Like someone will cancel all of a sudden, you know, the kids, the family's all gone unexpectedly. And you have this pocket of time that you had no concept yeah. would exist. Um, sometimes when I have to reschedule things with people, I'm like, ah, I'm creating a time pocket for them. Mm -hmm. um, but those will appear. You will get things done or you will have the support, but it takes the trust. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that trust is what opens up the space for that synchronicity, coincidence, uh, co-creative energy um, to happen, right? If you're not trusting and you're trying to control everything. Definitely. Yeah, because they can if you if you it's like on like I have to remind myself fairly often to the like when I catch myself I've gone into the I've got this big list of things I've got to do and I'm just going down that well you have to do this today this has got to be the thing it's like that is the surefire way way to kill the delightful idea that came to you <laughs> because you'll you'll take all the joy out of it and then if you do manage to create it you won't create it with, with any of the same energy that you you would have done if you just allowed it to come at the moment that you had the energy for it and I think yeah it's like yeah absolutely absolutely 
Um, wow, this has been, I think, one of the most illuminating conversations I've ever had around intuition. <laughs> I'm so excited about this because um, it is really, really important. Yeah, it really is. And it, it's, yeah, it's so, it's just so not, well, I think it is changing, but the world has been very much, forget about intuition, that's a load of nonsense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, hooray! Yeah. That, that things yeah. Are changing. Absolutely. Do you want, um, should we share the soul scribble with people? Yes, of- yes. I'm going to just stop and re-record and then let's get to that. It'll be lovely. Okay, hang on. Work out. Stop. Okay.